Well, welcome guys, and thank you so much for coming uh, early today and uh, choosing this one instead of all the other awesome talks. Uh, it's, it's a really difficult choice, and I appreciate that you, you are spending your time here. So, um, my talk is uh, Why Love Pencils? So, this is the uh, long, long version of the answer. Um, and the short version is because I used to suck at painting. <laughs> and uh, has stuck with the pencils. Um, so uh, all, on that note, um, I'll just start with something because um, what I mentioned, painting. Um, sometimes some, some really uh, serious shifts uh, in our way of thinking, uh, in our way of approaching drawing, painting, sculpting, whatever you're doing, comes from very simple, simple triggers sometimes. Yeah. So um, humor me with this very short story about, uh, about how something changed me. I, I, I was really stuck with painting, like uh, for whatever reasons, uh, I was completely blocked. Uh, I was maybe around 30 something and I still couldn't paint anything. Um, and I ended up uh, being at a lecture of a brilliant painter called Azara. At the time I was very insecure and uh, I was projecting uh, that in the form of cynicism and aggression uh, towards the world, like denying uh, what I see, and uh, which was preventing me from learning. And uh, during that uh, talk, it was a very dark room, uh, projector, and uh, this, uh, this nice man was showing his paintings and discussing them and, and talking about it. Um, and I had all these cynical thoughts in my head, being like, oh, right, you know, like, what about that painting now? Like, wow, horses on a beach. Um, and <laughs> so I'm just being super sarcastic in my mind, and, uh, and I'm uh, so condescending. If anybody would, would just, you know, put uh, subtitles of my thoughts on the screen, somebody would definitely punch me in the face. <laughs> and at some point, this guy, you know, like, brings this painting of a, of a red roof, uh, white chimney, blue sky, uh, green trees, and I'm thinking, like, dude, really? Like, wow, we, we got to that one? Like, this is, I'm just so thrilled about it. And, uh, and then he's like, well, you know, continuing with this very gentle uh, way of speaking. He says, well, notice how the warm light hits the, hits the red bricks, and then the light bounces off, and it hits the, the white wall, which now suddenly changes to kind of this nuance. But then the shadow, you know, is reflecting from sky and, and as I'm listening to this suddenly painting started making sense to a point where I started sinking in my chair feeling so fucking embarrassed realizing years and years and years of just like being afraid and uh, you know just kind of overlooking things and looking at the final goal and, and just not paying attention not, not thinking about little things and I was just completely, like, I disappeared, basically, in my chair. I was absolutely, absolutely embarrassed. And this man changed my life, and I started painting from that day on. I was so freaking embarrassed that, the, you know, at the end, everybody goes, you know, get their book and go and signs and, you know, the usual, like, wow, I, I really enjoyed your talk, blah, blah, blah. And then I couldn't talk. I just got the book. I went there. And, just give me the book and he looks at me. Uh, uh, signature. And I was like, oh. <laughs> And I, I just got it. I'm like, signature? What the fuck? <laughs> anyway, um, so in, in this talk, I'll show you some stuff. They'll be like, really? Like, re you're going to show us a line now? We're going we're gonna to discuss that? So it's fine if you decide to make a joke about it, and we'll laugh together. Uh, but uh, I just couldn't imagine that there could be more cynical, more meaner, uh, more you know, disgusting person than me at that particular moment. Uh, so, uh, and you all seem like nice folks. So, uh, I imagine you'll be, you'll be taking way more than what uh, I did uh, of, of everything. So, the lesson to this is, um, you never know what little thing is going to trigger something in you that's going to that's going to change it and. You're going to hear facts and truths and, 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 and advices over and over. And, uh, and one day, they'll stuck. 
they'll, they'll stick. You know, one day they'll get in your head, and one day you'll get it. Um, I knew all about the the bouncing light and blah blah blah, but it didn't get in my head until thirty something, and then suddenly it did. So, if it seems like you're hearing something again and again, and it's still not doing it for you, one day it will, and it's just not that day yet. Uh, to me, things come a little later usually, but uh, keep your mind open for things because you never know uh, when stuff's going to change. So. We got this, let's move on. Uh, so, back to the pencils and, and, and things. So really quickly, why I love them, really like to, to get to the uh, one. I chose this not very smart title. Um, so this was a piece that I did for, uh, for a demo. Um, it was about an hour or two, uh, I don't remember, but the idea was to, to just sit there and, um, and have fun and, and show different, different types of pencils, different techniques, going, smudging, deleting, uh, changing way of holding it, you know, because uh, it, it all matters how you hold a pencil, you know? Like if you, if you really want to go details, you hold it like that. If you, if you want to go uh, still be precise with less details, you hold it, you know, for, for the back. I should have really gotten a pencil for some. Um, and, uh, if you, if you want to lose control, you, you kind of hold it like this from far away. And then uh, if you really want to surprise yourself, you hold it uh, in a kind of a, you know, the most uncomfortable way you can. And then you're going to block uh, all the, like, for example, like, come on, like, I hold it like, like this sometimes, or like that. And then I, I lose a lot of the, uh, a lot of the usual control that I have when I hold it in a, in a, in a weird way, which suddenly, unlocks some new moves that I didn't know I had. And, and it's pretty fun. Because drawing is after all fun. Uh, at least for me, it is a lot of fun. All the drawings that I do, uh, I do them in, uh, in my free time. And, and you can see how sometimes my head just, just goes like that. Sometimes I get really, really precise. Uh, um, other times it's just this thing. Um, and so that's what this is about. Uh, being spontaneous with a pencil. It just really allows me to, um, you know, go in a direction, calm it down, get precise, uh, block things. So this is one of the things that's super forgiving. Um, whenever I have to design characters that, uh, that are really, uh, you know, shapes that are, um, am I in the way, by the way? You guys see? You good? Okay. Maybe I'll go behind the table. Um, so um, it's uh, it's just such a such a great medium, uh, letting you try and go forward, uh, look for uh, look for what you you want to achieve. Uh, it's su super subtle. Um, this piece was almost like a game uh, where I just tried to go uh, smudge the hell out of it uh, and uh, and use the you know mostly like the smudge tool. Just to get super subtle things, uh, the approach here was you start from the big volumes and you and you make sure that you, you know you get those everything works in a mask and you add the details that last. You don't add details. You, you don't start from the details unless it's all about the details and not so much about the whole volume. Um, so it's it's a it's a sure bet to be successful then to start with details. There's a there's a rule that I really like uh, in in completing a piece in general is like you start from the uh, uh, from the whole you know from, from the whole picture to the to the detail and then you go back from the detail to the whole picture which means um, you first see the whole thing as you draw and you kind of like composite get it together make sure that it all kind of works together and then you start looking for these details that really complement what what this piece is about but then you stop. And then you step back, you know, like which details do I need and which details are harming that piece and harming the main purpose of the piece. Like if you have too many details now, maybe you'll lose the fact that it was supposed to look like a certain shape because everybody's looking at the different things. So you got to delete some of those details and, and pull back in order to serve the, the overall thing. So that's where the first go for the volumes and then go for the details thing goes. It's super rich, and uh, probably my most fun part in drawing is uh, is when it's when I do cross hatching. Like this is um, 
you know, the, the difference between this and that is this doesn't, oh, that corner, where is it? Ta -da. See, see how this is kind of like, um, it's clogged a little bit. It's a super solid gray, you know, like it, it, it doesn't breathe. While this, as it's breathing, you can see little whites and stuff and they kind of pop in between. And I really love that when, when they just kind of go and it feels fresh, it feels like air comes through. And it's my favorite part about drawing. And uh, out of this piece, I think, you know, if I cut everything else, I just want to leave that. This is my absolute favorite part of this because there's so many different values of gray going. Uh, and, you know, something that, you know, this is kind of the same gray, but it suddenly feels lighter because the background got darker and, you know, this got really super dark. So, yeah. It's super graphic, uh, obviously. Allows you to go to a lot of contrast. And, uh, to me, it's, uh, it's super important. And of course, it's concise. It's, uh, it, it lets you tell everything with, uh, with a single line. And, and it's kind of, line is where things started for me. Really. Uh, let's see. So, tools. Um, what I use. Uh, obviously, there, there could be many different variations of tools. And, since I lost these guys, I, I bought new ones, but uh, they're kind of the same thing. So, uh, whoops, uh, wrong button. So um, I very, very often draw with uh, with this here. This is a 0.92B mechanical pencil. The reason is that uh, it's because it's soft and it's slightly fatter. Um, you know, when when you draw a few more lines and it gets flat on one side, it gives you a really thick line. And then you just rotate your pencil and it's super sharp. It's, yeah, it's really cutting. So uh, I love this one. I've done probably 50% of my drawings with, with that. Um, then this dude is 0 0.3 um, and it's an HB one. So it's lighter, harder, and super thin. What I use this one for uh, is sometimes when I'm, when I'm searching for the image and I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing. And I go with like super light sketches. Like it's, and I barely touch it, so just I can see it. And then um, if, I, if I'm not happy, I would erase it with, uh, with that eraser because it really spares the paper. Um, and it's just kind of, you go swoosh and it lifts everything. So um, this is my, um, this is kind of my, my research pencil. Also fantastic for tiny little details that you have. But also uh, something else is, um, if we go back to uh, this piece, for example, um, if I needed to make this slightly darker, for example, I wouldn't go for uh, 2B or something heavy. I'll go for that 0.3 HP, and I'll, I'll do like a tiny film on top of it. And it just, it's invisible. Like when you do it, it's like you're doing nothing. But what you just did, you added a super, super fine shade of gray on top of it. And if it's, you can use the darker, again, with that one. Because it's invisible and it just makes your drawing without touching it, without destroying any of the lines that you like, it just goes super fine, you know, on top of it with that. And it just makes it slightly darker. And you do this as, as long as you want, uh, you know, to go. So, so that's why, um, you know, this one is so important for me. Um, so we, I can pretty much draw everything I need to with these two guys. The other ones that I absolutely uh, that I love using are just the standard pencils because they're they're just so alive. You know, you you fold it sideways and it's just a super flat thing, and you, know, you, you cover ground quickly. You block things. It's it's fantastic. They, they look dull. They give you a, a really uh, solid line. Uh, this I mostly use for for filling, like when I need to do a quick background or just just block big big parts. Uh, I use these chunks. And uh, the smudge tool, it, I discovered it at a much later age. I was uh, probably 40, 41. Um, it was so funny because I, I, I go to the same uh, store. It's an awesome store in Paris. Uh, and I speak shitty French, especially at the time. And, um, and they have no idea who I am. So, um, you know, I look like uh, an older dude that uh, if I'm into arts, I should know what I'm talking about. But then I always ask the dumbest questions ever. 
And so one day I go there and she's seeing the, you know, the, the, the young girl that works at the store, she sees that I'm picking with pencils and stuff. And then I look at the, you know, the, the, stump, the, the paper stumps and it's not still, I'm like, what is this? And she looks at my room and I was like, what do you do with that? She's like, well, you, you, you smudge pencils. I'm like, oh, so you don't use it, you think? <laughs> and she's like, no. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. You know, I uh, buy it and she looks at me like, yeah, this too. Um, but later I went, you know, and I was asking for uh, watercolors, and she's like, well, you have great starter kits. And I'm preparing a solo exhibition, right? Uh, and I'm like, no, no, uh, I'm just not familiar which ones are the good ones, you know. I, I, I suck at this, and she's like, um, no, I really recommend these. I'm like, oh, what are the most expensive ones? So, so I have a history of being an idiot in that store, and they always think that I'm just a, you know, the, the rich hobbyist who uh, comes and just wastes, you know, good, good materials. So I brought this home, and I'm super happy with the smudge tool, and I'm smudging everything, and it's like, yeah, hey, look at that, you know, like, uh, subtle rays everywhere. Um, and at some point, I'm like, but you, I need to clean now. Like, what do I do? So I'm looking at this, and you, you really feel like a monkey sometimes, you know? You, you, get your, you start using your knife, and it's really not going well. Um, then you get a pencil sharpener, and you feel even dumber. Um, and then you got other options. I got no idea. So um, I went back to the store. I'm like, hey, about that thing. You know? <laughs> and she's like, yeah. I'm like, how do you clean it? And she looks at me like, sandpaper? I'm like, whoa! <laughs> Mind blown, you know, like sandpaper, man. Like, well, I didn't think of that. You know, this is awesome. And she again, like, oh, man. <laughs> you just keep coming. Yeah. So anyway, um, the, the smudge tool is, is super, super awesome. And um, I, I love the combination of it when um, you you do an initial quick sketch and you take that uh, that guy and I, by the way I don't ever clean them like I, you actually need them dirty <laughs> cleaning them defeats the purpose because uh, then you take it and then you need to draw something to get the graphite to get it dirty to, so it, at the end you just leave it like that. So the idea is you, you do a loose sketch, you know, and then you take the dirty uh, smudge tool and you just kind of block the shadows, da, 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 which also smudges your, it blurs your, your sketch, yeah, you know, and it just uh, gives it a very soft feel. And then you take one of the sharp pencils and just go on top, bam, 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 and this immediately pops. Like it's so effective. Uh, it's, it's really, really awesome. Uh, and... Uh, I recently, thanks to my buddy Karl Kapinski, who got me into uh, the electric uh, pencil sharpness, I recommend getting an electric pencil sharpener because it's just so satisfying to go like, you know, it's just the feeling is awesome. You can achieve that with all sorts of pencils, but that one is just brilliant. Makes me uh, makes me happy every time. Um, so, let's see what's next. Um, yeah, I. Uh, uh, I always am so obsessed with pencils that uh, even my first few brushes in Photoshop uh, are pencils. Uh, and uh, I'm really so used to uh, this tool to, even in my professional work, uh, this is not professional work, um, I, I would be looking for, uh, for characters or compositions or anything with pencils and quickly blocking things. So, um, these are, I'm, I'm using a couple of pencils, uh, one of the animator pencil, uh, just a pencil, and then a few rough ones uh, I need to block things. Um, so um, it, it really helps me uh, to figure things out. Um, why? Because if, uh, if I use a, a, a brush, um, I feel like I'm, I'm already, I'm not precise enough, and I have to constantly go back and forth between a line and, uh, and a thin, uh, thick and a thin thing. But with uh, with pencil, I I like it because I can get precise whenever I want, really quickly. And when I have to make a decision and, and commit to something, I just go and you know I have the possibility to just call that line and nail it and be done with it. Um, I used to have a professor at, at school uh, at the academy who uh, was always getting super upset when you see. You. Like uh, drawing something, and you know, it's supposed to be uh, you know the outline of an arm or whatever, and you have too many lines. It's like, okay, which one is it? Pick one. Which one? And uh, he would he would make fun of us all the time. Uh, yeah, you don't want it to feel like Black Friday uh, over there. Uh, it's true. 
uh, so appropriate um, as well. Um, I, I don't know how Yana Sherman does it, that she can actually finish such you know, genius pieces in portrait. I have no idea. Uh, I can't do it. Uh, what I use portrait for is sketching, and, uh, and I love it for that. So I, again, just use the, the pencils, and uh, basically this is, uh, this is almost where uh, my appropriate um, tools goes in. So um, piano versus drawing. So just uh, just a quick uh, quick uh, going back in time uh, for motivation. Um, it's always cool to uh, when you feel stuck and you know you, you need to kind of motivate yourself and move a little further. Um, treat yourself to a new tool. Uh, get yourself new new paper. Something change something in your in your working habits. Um, get a new brush. Try something new, and uh, suddenly you'll you'll see your drawings in a new way, and you'll get curious because curiosity is is, is what drives us, or at least what kind of drives me mostly. Um, and never to be never to uh, never to feel stuck. Uh, so it was uh, basically that my mom wanted to make me a pianist. My my dad. Uh, was just buying me cool stuff, and uh, as I was growing, I hated piano because it was work, and uh, I just always got these. Uh, he let me use his uh, rapid graphs, which are pretty awesome, and uh, this is how I started as a kid. And I found that uh, found that image, which is exactly what I used to have as a kid in Bulgaria, which is which was a communist country at the time, and this is this was all we had, like. These are all the colors. This is the only type of marker we have, and this is it. Yeah. So these are my uh, these are my drawings really quickly. As you can see from a very very early age, it was all uh, line for me. Um, most kids draw with lines. Uh, the the numbers represent the, the age I was at uh, drawing this. Uh, but I was super super uh, uh, fond of drawing. So you may recognize Hitler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is not because I was a Nazi. Uh, that was because I was super inspired by Bidstrup. And Bidstrup was a communist uh, uh, artist who, uh, but this is his drawing, this is, these are mine. Um, and uh, he, was a, he was a communist artist who was making fun of capitalism and ridiculing it. And, you know, uh, and, but also, he was an amazing, amazing artist. So if you, I get this question a lot, who's your biggest influence? As yeah, growing up, it was Bidstrup. Google it, uh, check him out. Uh, this guy is uh, what really got me interested in people telling stories uh, without words. Because I was a kid, you know, couldn't read. Um, and uh, funny enough, you know, uh, I, I drew this as a kid, and I, you know, this is one of my favorite drawings. Uh, these two lovebirds on the street, um, and. Uh, Probably a lot of his humor and a lot of his uh, uh, drawings stuck in my head, and I keep drawing like that. So cross-hatching classics, I'll, I'll just quickly uh, point out some things that uh, may click with you or may not. Uh, it's fine, but uh, I'll go like I'll, I'll make a few jumps in time. Um, so Dur, at that time, these dudes were all engravers. There was an artist who would do this in shading with grays, and then they'll assign numbers to areas and gradients, and they'll give it to the engravers, and they'll be like, okay, you're doing number 23, you're going to do from 17 to 22 in that area, and they all know exactly what they're doing, and they're using these things, you know, uh, lines, dashes, dots, blah, 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 they, they, they cross things, and uh, using straight lines uh, to communicate, but you see how all is super organized, very clean, and although it's all quite technical, he manages to, uh, to communicate emotion and a fantastic balance of, of uh, shades of gray. A hundred years ahead, uh, Rembrandt, that guy's a genius. Uh, and if you've seen any uh, originals of his, I know from close up, it looks like a dirty palette. And then you step back, and it's amazing. And uh, you know, just, just check out the subtle, uh, the subtle gray tone that he adds with a bunch of, with a bunch of dots. Uh, when you draw, uh, it, it shouldn't all be lines, it shouldn't all be cross-hatching. Sometimes it's, uh, it's a little hairy, sometimes it's dots, sometimes it's dashes, you know, it, whatever it takes. And he didn't, you know, plan those like the Dura guys. It was just a feeling. He just needed a few dots and 
that, by the way, is uh, is a dry point. So there's no failure. Like you can't undo here. You can delete this. Um, another hundred years ahead. Probably my favorite piece of Goya. I apologize for the shitty picture. I couldn't find a better resolution. Uh, notice how uh, he's treating the direction of the strokes, communicating, um, communicating um, calm, um, peaceful scenarios when you when you go with uh, when you go with parallel lines, when um, and and it all uh, creates this um, serenity, you know, and when you. Uh, and also the very you know directional uh, horizontal and vertical lines usually are very calm. Uh, so the only calm things here are you know the benches and the bull. Everything else is chaos. You know, you know lines going everywhere, uh, and, it, and it's brilliant. Um, same thing uh, in here when you when you check out all the calm things are you know very straight lines. Whenever there's drama, they start crossing and going in different directions. Uh, when you want to create this flow of something calm and flowing, uh, then you sort of look at this as if it's grass and wind. You know, as if the wind moves the grass, the grass kind of goes like this, and it, it's very calming uh, and it feels very unite, united. Um, jumping ahead, Zorn in the 1800s. Uh, now he, he brings it to to a closer to, to us uh, level, and um, I really, really love uh, how he does it. Uh, and especially love that he chooses always to, when he wants to represent uh, blocking, like a hard surface, something you can't go through, it's always 90 degrees, like bam, you know, uh, cross hatching on top of each other. Um, whenever, there's, uh, whenever there's motion, like here, they kind of overlap, like the, the grass thing. Uh, and elegance, and you see how you know the the directions. So, sort of, you know, it helps with the, the direction of the strokes. Help with the composition. You know, everything just uh, uh, works so well. Uh, Toppy, he recently passed away. Um, again, to to prove the point of uh, direction of uh, strokes uh, and like even dots. Uh, doing all this. Uh, it's super important, but he's very interesting in the way that he, he does the 90 degree and really harsh hatching, but he actually deconstructs uh, the, um, he doesn't use uh, his lines to, to go with the shape. He actually uses them to make patches of, of tones, of values. So that's what he's doing. And he's absolutely brilliant. Uh, uh, pairing it with uh, very dramatic single lines for, for expression. Uh, and now, um, some of the exercises. Um, I actually didn't go to um, uh, the, the, the class. When I was trying to get into high school of art, I didn't go to the classic uh, classes where you, you sit down and there's a sphere and a cube and, and drapery and all that, and we all die boredom. Um, but uh, some of the, some older artists sent me to, to this friend of theirs, uh, this uh, woman artist who uh, asked me to go in and um, uh, show up with a bunch of big papers like that and a bunch of 2B pencils. And um, all I did was clouds, cross hatching, just like start filling clouds. And it's just, you just go and you keep filling in. Yeah, fill this and then fill 10, we'll come back and you know, we'll see what you did. And so it's all about uh, trying to ex explore first, like what is going on, like how does it look. And then I, it was super depressing and boring, and, and I hated it. Um, yeah, I was fourteen, mm -hmm. so um, so I wrote back, and then with her pen or whatever it was it was, she started circling things and saying, you know, this is great, um, this sucks. Uh, you, you concentrate on this. See how this breathes nicely. This is clogged. Like you have this patch here that looks like a line that shouldn't be. And as I kept going, and she kept giving me feedback and showing me how to do it, um, it uh, uh, you know I started feeling how now I start controlling these things, and they start you know going back and forth. Um, and it becomes really really rich, um, and uh, to the point where one day she's like, "Okay, now draw this here," and it was so freaking easy because suddenly I'm no longer worried about 
Okay, I'm gonna place this now. Oh shit, it looks flat. I'm gonna place this now. Oh man, I like it. it's flatter now. Like, okay, I need to connect them both now in the middle. Oh shit, no, I got this dark line in the middle. And because I learned over a few months to, to control my hand, making these abstract clouds up and down, concentrated, darker, lighter, flatter, whatever, I just concentrated on where the light comes from. Because, uh, you know, sphere, you just draw a circle and you're done. So it was all about where the light comes from and how to balance that cloud to go. And I started thinking, like, this is going this way, this is going that way. And the sphere just emerged. So needless to say, I, I got it first in class. It was, it was the most solid uh, training I, I've gotten. And I thought, um, I, I, I'm really grateful to her because um, we so often... But, you know, the, the car before the horse, uh, you know, giving, like, okay, draw me this, this person. Like, shit, you don't even know how to, how to complete a volume. You got to draw an arm. Uh, you know, that, that's so many issues at once and so many chances to fail. While when you do this exercise, it's, uh, you can't fail because there's nothing. You're not drawing anything specific. So you don't have the feeling of failure. You don't feel like shit, like you, you constantly suck. You know, so that's great. So the whole idea was keep it organized, um, like these guys, like move, move the lines together, you know, make sure that they all work together um, and they have all purpose. They don't always have to be the same. Some guys are really struggling there, um, but that's the general idea. So here's, uh, and, and you do realize this is kind of an overview of my schoolism class that I'm putting together. So uh, in, in that I'll go really much uh, in depth of, of this and we'll train whoever wants to uh, be part of it into um, the way I do things, which is not the only way at all. You can do it in many, you know, millions of ways, but this is the one that I, uh, that I like. So just quickly, like this little thing here, like uh, just imagine that, but in many, many sheets of paper overlapping, this is how this happened. You know, these are all the lines that group like that. First batch, second, third, and we, when you put them all together, it becomes this. An example of how I use that, all this here is the same thing over here. This is exactly the same approach, how I did this. There's nothing else to it. But when you're so used to, to, to doing this, you no longer worry about which lines where to put them. Uh, you worry about what am I doing? Like what's, the, what's the purpose? Is there, you know, what am I looking for? Another one, uh, another exercise is this one. And uh, I call them the poofs. It's like a, you know, you want to just make make a cloud, and and uh, as you see, you know, by themselves they look completely ridiculous, and they go in all sorts of ways. Sometimes just really unorganized, uh, but in the end, uh, you can use them in something like that. Another one of the exercises that uh, that we did and will be in schoolism is these shapes where you 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 control yourself to make sure that you fit within. Uh, Within different shapes and parameters, uh, like uh, Wonder Woman, like just to just to make sure that you can cut that nicely, and uh, and and still not worry about that line, but more worry about like how's that gradient happening, like, uh, and think about the gradient, not think about controlling your uh, thing, because if you start thinking too much about that line, you're gonna you're gonna lose the war of the gradient. You know, you'll have a really nice line cut, but not great. So, let loose. Um, the idea here is, um, uh, quick story again. Um, when I was graduating the academy, um, I had this, uh, I had to complete uh, my graphics. Uh, I had to do uh, uh, printmaking, and I had to do a bunch of uh, copy plates with you know, acid inks, the whole thing. And uh, you have to, you need a studio for that. And I went to the house of this. Uh, uh, I later found that he was uh, had mental issues. Um, this this artist who is uh, exactly the opposite of Nathan Fox. If you ever talk to Nathan Fox, who has a very soothing voice and is super nice. So that guy was was totally nuts. And and he lived in this house by the beach and had two German shepherds. Uh, and it was a very long. Um, line uh, like a very long path from, from the front door to, to the house and when you ring the door the German shepherds kind of start you know looking through the, the gate and uh, and he shows up he's like who is it and I'm like Victor he's like okay 
um, when I say run, you run. I'm like, okay. <laughs> All the two German shepherds like, Shh. and then he disappears behind a, behind a, you know, the, the house, and you're just like, okay. And then you go, run, <laughs> and you bolt, you know, and you just pray don't trip, and you just run, and you run, and you can hear the dogs, like, tick, 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 tick. and you just enter, you boom, and the dogs, <laughs> and you made it. That was on the way out as well. <laughs> and so, um, so this guy, we started the day with a bottle of wine and a bunch of apples. This is how it was going. And after like 10 excruciating days of me scratching, you know, tiny little lines and being super uh, scared because you can't delete this, I mean, you can't erase it, you can't fix it, it's fucking copper. Uh, one day he comes and says, like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, well, you know, I'm just doing my thing. And he's like, it's dead, it's stiff. What is this? Look at this. There's no life. What are you doing? Why are you wasting time? I'm like, well, what else can I do? He's like, wait. And he takes this metal thing, you know, and he takes one of my plates that have been scratching. And he goes, look at it now. <laughs> See? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you know, like I've been scratching this for. <laughs> You know, and now it has this big thing, you know, when you scratch metal, it, it, it you know, it pushes the metal out, so it gets hairy, and when you put it, it just gets this, like, it's really rich. And after the first shock, it just, suddenly I realized that my stuff's alive now. And he's like, now you do it. I'm like, what? I, you have six more plays, right? And I'm going to leave them dead. So then I took it, and the first one I was super scared, like, because, again, you know, you've been doing this for, you spend so much time on this, stressing on every detail, and now you're just going to go on top of it, you know, and ruin it completely. And that was so liberating uh, and invigorating, it was just like, suddenly, I don't care, you know, I can do this. And I did it, and it really gave life to, uh, to my, to my uh, plates, and they, and they became really energized. I don't have a picture of them, unfortunately, uh, or better for me. Um, but anyway, so that's what I learned from this guy. Sometimes just let loose, trust yourself, don't worry about it. You know, you can always draw another one. It's not a big deal. Just relax and, and believe in yourself. So that's where that new exercise, uh, you know, I'm adding to, to all the ones that my teacher did. It's just this shit, you know, uh, and it's so much fun because in the end you can you can do drawings like that. And I really love that drawing. Uh, I know that most people feel that it's kind of you know trashy in a way. It's not well organized. But uh, I was just thinking about the dance all the time. I wasn't thinking about the volumes. I wasn't thinking about uh, you know about anatomy. It was just you know these these two these two dancers in the rain. It, they were amazing, and uh, and that's where you know that chaotic line came that uh, that I so enjoyed. So some of the practice uh, things that um, I'll be doing uh, in the school is in class is uh, you know talking about shapes, learning about shapes, but in but in my class it's going to be more about exploring shapes with uh, with the cross hatching, and uh, it's the foundation of choosing. Uh, the direction, the length uh, of, of the line that will uh, will, commu will communicate the most, even inside that shape, about what's happening. Like what's what's the uh, what's the motion? What's the what's the movement in this? And another exercise will be a similar thing, but now with gradients. And it's so interesting because once you start controlling these and you get better. Uh, and when you have to do a, a whole new piece, could be just painting or stuff, you, you certainly have this idea that uh, the light does not hit us exactly at the same time. You know, if it hits here, my feet are going to be super dark compared to this part. So it is a, an overall uh, radiation going on. And uh, that's a really fun exercise. Um, also, drawing the negative. Uh, and choosing the direction and strength and energy of the lines to, to try to communicate as much as possible in, the, in, in what's happening in the empty space just for the li lines outside. And, uh, and otherwise, when we uh, do like the first ones, uh, where it's just a simple silhouette, and then you just add a few shadows, but again, it's about uh, uh, coming down to the choice of what direction, what length, what, what strength of lines do I do? So 
uh, it, it all feels uh, just enough like uh, to communicate whatever I need to communicate uh, in, in what way. Proportions. Um, I'm not going to talk to you about like how many heads are in the body. Uh, rather, I would like to tell you that uh, I once worked with uh, an incredibly uh, talented artist who was supposed to do these uh, characters, uh, and uh, I, I wanted to send him a reference for the characters, and he said, no, no, no I don't need any reference. Um, I'm, I know anatomy extremely well. He does. The issue was, though, that uh, all the fat guys that he drew uh, were just really muscular guys with big balls, um, and, uh, and everyone looked the same. It was, everyone was really well drawn, but they were all the same. And we are not all the same at all. Um, uh, I was, uh, you know, somebody commented once that, uh, well, her, her, you know, her legs are really short and her torso is really long. Well, true. But she's a huntress in a jungle. I need her to, to look like, you know, she can, she can jump and, and, and she can go in tiny spaces. You know, I, I need her to feel like a jaguar. You know, that's why she's like that. Her torso is longer, but so what? You know, um, her torso is also pretty long, but she has long legs, you know, and, and, it's, and that's okay. Because we're all, we're all different, like these dudes, for example. Uh, don't rely on, on, standard, uh, on standard proportions and say, it's supposed to be like this because that's what the book says. We're all different, all of us. There are some margins that we all fit in, you know, like the, leg, uh, the, the arms don't go under the knees and, and all that stuff. But, uh, but don't stress about it. Don't limit yourself, especially if you want to do character design. And if you want your characters to look different, we are different people. For example, um, there's this guy, you know, the, the classic, uh, uh, classic thing that we have a basketball player, and then we have a Thai boxer, and then uh, we, we have Josh Brolin. And because uh, uh, I was always amazed that Josh Brolin's head is, uh, I always thought he was a small guy, you know, because his head's big. And I always thought he was like this, this tall. And, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm going to show Josh Brolin, you know, and then I'm like, holy shit, Josh Brolin's actually this tall. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, you know, what the hell is going on? So, <laughs> this doesn't make sense. <laughs> Josh Bowling's head is gigantic. <laughs> and he's a film star, you know? Um, so, it works for him. Uh, it should totally work for you, too, if you want to do that. Um, and uh, that is the point I want to make. You know, not to teach you what the proportions are supposed to be, but to teach you that, learn the basics, but explore and it's it's extremely important to to not draw the same thing over and over because that's going to limit you as an artist and it's going to limit you as uh, what you have to offer to to the people you work for. So um, let's see. Um, that's just uh, a lot of people uh, have actually told me that they, they don't know how to measure. So I just prepared a quick tutorial uh, to teach people how to do it. So I apologize for everyone that knows how to do that. Um, and also how to translate uh, when you draw from life and you need to translate on your paper. The, way to, the easiest way to do it instead of measuring distances is just to uh, hold your paper like this and then you see a diagonal and you put your pencil over the diagonal and then you just transfer all that paper and you have it and that's it. Super simple, super fast. What else? Um, observation. Um, how much time do I have? Quick story. So, um, I... I observe a lot. I look at people a lot. I remember things, and this is a big deal for me. And usually, nobody knows that I'm looking at them. I'm really good at this, um, and uh, nobody knows. I'm a listener. <laughs> um, and there was one time I came back from the states, uh, and I'm in a, in a lounge in uh, in British Airways, and I'm super jet lag. I'm very tired. And I got this soup, and then this woman comes in, and she goes to the bar. And I start wondering, like, huh, like, what makes it work so well? Because she does not have the classic built of a uh, what is considered a sexy person, but somehow it's just so attractive. And I'm like, huh, like, super heavy arms, but thin legs. But you know, is it is it the fabric? Is it is it the wrinkles that it makes? Like, what is it? You know? And I'm thinking, like, maybe 
light, maybe like how she moves, what is it, you know, how she carries herself. And then I hear, she's freaking hot, huh, isn't she? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and this guy's like, oh, come on, you know, we've been staring at her for like 30 minutes. Like, Me? No, no. I was like, oh, you know, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we're the same here, you know? Like, I'm like, no, no, I... And I'm like, yeah, what are you going to tell her? You're an artist, you're observing the wrinkles? <laughs> so I just, I blushed, and he like, oh, loser, you know? And I, I got my suit, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> so, so don't get caught. <laughs> it really sucks. Um, so um, so the, uh, I have a special thing about the observation uh, in my class that I do. Um, uh, back in the days, I worked on, uh, in, in the early 90s, I worked on a game, and we were making, uh, we built this thing uh, where you can make an avatar, basically a portrait of anybody you want. And because it just looks so overwhelming, like there's so many eyes, there's so many noses, how do you get about this, you know? So, so we reached out to a professor uh, who teaches criminology at the Bulgarian police, because that's where I was back then. And he's like, oh, that's not that difficult. Um, there's only uh, seven head shapes. Uh, there's uh, four uh, ears top shape. And I'm like, yeah, right. You know? <laughs> and then we did a test. And uh, we drew those. And then we put them in, in uh, software just you know, to stretch them, make them bigger, change angles. And you can literally make anybody with that. Like, seriously, literally anyone. Um, and uh, so in the class, I'll, I'll go over exactly you know what these things are and uh, you know how they go. I'll give you one example uh, with the next slide. Uh, but it's 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 amazing how ex how the same we are, like how uh, uh, just simple sizes, positioning, uh, placement, angle, uh, and color uh, change. Uh, you know makes us appear so different, but really we're so the same. Like all the races can be done with these things. Every single race. Because I immediately said, well, you can't do Asian people with that. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> and, and you can't, because really we're the same. It's, it's scary how simple it is. Uh, so that's, that's uh, a big deal, uh, what I'm teaching. And this, this is a, a great way to, to remember faces. This is what I use when I go in the metro, and I, and I really like someone, and I want to draw them. And I do these passes where I'm like, OK, uh, first, what, was, what is it that, that captured me? Like, what was the, the most intriguing thing? So I'm not looking at the person. I'm thinking, what was it? Like, who is this? So I'm going to look for a second, and I'm going to find it. And I look, find it, and I'm like, yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. So I remember this and this and this, but what was the nose like? Like, what's the bridge? What's the... So I concentrate on the nose. I look at the nose, map it out. I'm like, okay, so now I have this, and the nose is this and this. Okay, what's the shape of the mouth? Is it going up, down, big lips, small lips? Whoop, done. And you know, within a minute and maybe five, six glances, I have a super serious map in my in my head of who that person is and how can I draw them. So when I go home, I'm done. And that will give you an enormous advantage when you have to come up with characters. And we're like, so you don't draw the same face over and over. And when you have to come up with new proportions, with new characters, with new feel, uh, and you're not sure how to approach it. This thing uh, with a simple multiplication giving you billions of possibilities of just making things wider and placing them in different places. Uh, a super fun exercise I do at workshops. At some point, I stop everyone and say, okay, take a clean uh, piece of paper and please draw me a, a, an ear with just lines. And people are like, I like just, just lines. Uh, you know, don't shade it, nothing, just lines. And everybody just goes, <laughs> and there's this thinking that happens, you know, and everybody's like, you know, some people are inventing years, you know, others are just like digging deep into child memories. Um, and eventually, I, you know, after a minute, I stop and say, like, okay, let's get it. And they're worried that they're not done, you know, so I take this and I start looking around. I'm a real jerk, and I'm like, well, what is this? This is not a year. You know, this doesn't look like it. Like, what are these lines? Where does that go? And I basically blast everyone. And they feel like, oh, fuck, man, like, you really should. I was like, actually, everybody failed. You know why? Because nobody looked left or right to see the year next to you. <laughs> that was the real test. Is anybody going to actually observe? There were, I don't know, like, 20 pairs of ears in the room, and nobody dared to even thought about looking, you know? I didn't say don't look at other ears. So observe, observation, you know, everything is in front of you. 
tip to one another. If, you're, it's, if it's overwhelming for you, choose a limb or choose a part and say, I'm going to study the arm today. Study the arm, and that week, all you're going to do is the arm. And, and make a point that you're going to go out and you're going to observe. And you'll try to recognize everything that you learned today about the arm in other people's arms. You're going to go back home, you're going to check on those drawings, you're going to think about it again. When you come, go out. Uh, let you live in a, in a warm place where you can see arms. <laughs> and you, you do that again. And that week, you focus on that only. And when you learn the left, you're going to do the same with the right. No, I'm kidding. Um, so here's, for example, how the heads work. This, in that system, everything is, uh, everything is based on simple shapes in that, in that list of things that I told you. And it's crazy how well it works. Um, so basically, there's, these are the seven types of heads. And that's what they look like. And we all fall into one of those categories. The difference comes into, are we slightly stretched or this or squished? But generally, that's it. Everybody fits with that. And to prove that, uh, when we were done with the software, it was working so well that we got a call from Saad, uh, who actually got interested in what we did. It was nuts. Uh, later, we did software for the Bulgarian police, which they used our game. We just made a professional version for it, and, and they no longer needed sketch artists. Nuts. Uh, and, and so, here's a few people you, you might know, um, and that's, uh, that's how it translates. That's what it is. Which is slight altercations to, you know, because everybody's different, you know, and there's details. But in general, that's how you remember people. That's the observation thing. That's, that's the observation technique. And nailed it. Ten minutes for questions. We have 10 minutes, uh, happy to, to, to answer questions, go over something that you needed to hear more about. So I was kind of sprinting through, through things, just to make sure that I, go ahead. Sorry, I, it's a silly question. I was wondering, after you do a technical drawing, how do you keep it from preserving from smudging all over or? While I'm drawing or after I'm done? After you're done. You can take a, a, a plastic sleeve or something. Or you can use a fixator, or a, I use one for pastels, uh, and it's doing really well. Any other questions? When will you be your school as school to class? Oh man, like <laughs> such pressing questions. <laughs> <laughs> Anything easier? That's going to be a little Latin. You know, uh, no, I, I, I hope that by the end of the year we'll be done. This sounds fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To uh, the approach to it, or uh, well, um, don't stuck your hand to to the paper. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to limit yourself with that drawing. Uh, so, or make sure that uh, you're not going to run over your drawing. Plan your line, uh, because if you start here and you you, you know you, you want to go up, then you're going to smudge your line. Um, so, if you want to do that, I would suggest. Uh, uh, just just plan how, how you're going to move because it'll get really frustrating that you're having fun and suddenly your elbow is touching the wall and you just can't move anymore. So just plan that. Go ahead. Um, so most of your drawings are done from the images like after you look at people? Or most of them, yes. Them? Yeah. Very, very few times I'll, I'll uh, use uh, reference only if uh, I, I want to make a point of realism and then I need to be absolutely rock solid. Um, uh, there is absolutely zero difference. Um, I, I, it's, it's, it's a tone you're going after. Uh, I have a name for you, Andrea Serio. <laughs> Check him out. That's, that's an artist who does incredible uh, landscapes uh, with pencil, uh, color pencils mostly. He has amazing technique. Is it okay if I try to Thank you. Um, 
Stop by my table. We'll talk. So when, I, when I'm hired to do things um, for, for a company, it's all digital. I, I can't do originals for this. When I do covers for, for books that I can sell the originals, um, it's, all, uh, it's all materials that I know and I'm comfortable with because, because I need to execute uh, and there's criteria I need to fit in and, uh, and the client is satisfied. Uh, when it's up to me, I don't care. If it's just for me, uh, anything goes all the time. Yeah. You ever play with uh, like pens, like how long is uh, all one pen? Yeah, yeah, um, I did once, it was really fun. Um, I even had the original drawing with me at the table. Uh, you can come and check it out. Yeah. Well, that's not sure. What advice would you give your 16 year old self? Um, be curious. Um, don't uh, don't focus on on, <coughs> on the end result um, because focusing on the end result will sometimes block you from starting. Uh, look, just look at the small things. Concentrate on doing rather than being. When you concentrate on being someone, being liked, being followed, being a star, being tall, being whatever. Uh, you're missing how you're gonna get there. Uh, so don't think about that. Rather concentrate on you know something in front of you, like in Appaloosa when Ed Harris said, "By now there's something running, and we gotta catch it." We don't worry about how the movie's gonna end or who's gonna live or die. Just like this thing's running, and we're catching it, and that's the probably the biggest advice. And also, don't be a jerk. <laughs> cool. Other questions? Um, interesting question, actually. Very interesting question. No, um, I um, I do it as a as a motion. Even if it's a still body, I still see movement in the pose, and my lines usually translate that. Way. It's all about how how it rotates. Where you know, if, if she's doing this, then my lines are going to go. You know, <coughs> just to push this, and then this one's going to go. Uh, and then some some other ways to just contradict and. and Create uh, dynamic, so it's rather dynamic in volume than light. Any other questions? Yeah. I'm terrible at math. I would never be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so exactly. Like, no, I no, really. I can't do math. I never <laughs> see. I never saw that. Way. That's a crop. That's a crop of the entire image. Oh, okay. um, so uh, when it's for fun, I just start having fun drawing, and then whatever happens, I'm kind of balancing it as I go. Mm -hmm. If it's a composition, I often just will, will put in the you know the golden rule or the, the dynamics and, and stuff, and just make sure that after I have my idea, it kind of fits nicely. And if it doesn't, I adjust a little bit just to fall into the into the good proportions. Then I take the measurements out and continue drawing. So I always try to make sure that. What, what my what my uh, paper is, uh, what's the goal, what's the center of attention, um, make sure that I focus on that, uh, and then that's that's kind of how it goes. Again, from like like as, uh, in the beginning I said, you start from the whole, then you go to the detail, then you go back, you know, just to see it as a whole. So it's you, know, you define what your goal is, uh, you go after that detail to illustrate, to bring it straight back, and then that's when you balance uh, all these faces. Do we need to make this stronger or add more detail here? So it's kind of a balance act. Um, before you come out to the market, what was the most challenging part of the process? Oh, I'll make you pay for it. All these drawings that I do, uh, you know, the 
Paris. That's it's all just uh, new writing. Uh, I started when I moved to Paris and I didn't speak a word French and I didn't like French TV. Sorry, French TV. <laughs> uh, and uh, I was just by myself, not having anything else to do, and uh, I started drawing. Yes. For uh, the Batman for Lab alternate cover that you did in the five, yeah. did you um, did you paint that? Yeah, that's um, actually acrylics. Yeah. Wow. And I, I had to grow some balls for that one, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was super intimidating. Like me and like brushes and it's a canvas and oh my god, and there's a palette and I mix paint. Yeah, it's crazy. Where's the original? Uh, I sold it. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? You can always come to my table and I'll be happy to, to answer it. Yeah? Uh, from Mr. Robots. <laughs> yeah. You working on it? Do we see it? Paper-ish uh, painting uh, for a client. Uh, it was a commission, and I was uh, super scared. But I forced myself and uh, just just trusted myself um, uh, and uh, finished it. When we okay, it's exactly eleven o'clock. Uh, any other questions? No, it, it's a longer story. I had a terrible teacher who told me that I said so much that he'll let me pass the year if I just don't go to his classes. <laughs> and uh, and I, instead of telling him, you're right, I suck, and that's why I'd be a good teacher and teach me, I said, oh yeah, fuck you, I don't need that. <laughs> and that which led to a trauma that stayed with me for 15 years and I couldn't paint. So if anybody, you know, a teacher especially, is an asshole to you and comes to you and, and is super mean to you, don't go defensive, insecure, and scared, and try to be, try to bite like a, like a dog in a corner. No, turn it over to him and say, well, you're absolutely right. And if you're a great teacher, help me see what you see, because you're so talented that I would be like you. I would like you to do that. And let's see what happens. <laughs> Cool. Thank you guys.